Hi, I know what you're thinking. What's some bloke with tatty hair and glasses and speaking with a ridiculous English accent doing talking about a pool made in the USA? Well, the answer is this is really the story of Alan's pool. And Alan contacted me to do some remote consultancy and I said yes. And so this is the product of that relationship. Anyway, and what a fantastic pool Alan made. My normal pool design, the profile, is sort of that shape. Okay, and there's the water level. And this is the swimming zone, and in here, these walls are made with concrete blocks. That's the simplest way to do it. Okay, and uh, this is the earth here. But it proved that his municipality insisted that he needed planning permission or a ticket to do any building on the ground. So we scrapped that idea and came up with something that was less like a pool and more like a pond. So, I suggested doing a profile of the pool more like this. Okay, and there's the water level. Now what we have here are the swimming zone, but it's defined by these walls which are sloped earth. And these slopes are about 60 degrees. And this depends on whether your soil can tolerate being sculpted like this. And it definitely needs to be free draining. And so this is the liner placed over here, that's the water level, and on top of these lumps, or the walls, the earth walls, we cap it with stone. And here is going to be the regeneration zone filled with gravel and pipe work, yeah, and plants. Okay. And, and for our circulation system, we have an airlift pump in here, in the planted zone. Normally the airlift pump terminates into the swimming zone, but we can't have that in this case, because we don't want to puncture the liner here and here. So we just keep the airlift pumps within the planted zone. So it's a simplification of the system, but it turns out to be quite elegant. Let's see what you think. Now before any great excavations took place, Alan made a scale model of the pool in his garden. With this he could test and refine his pool design and get an idea if the earth was suitable for sculpting in this manner. a sheet of polythene, some water and rocks, and it was coming to life. Tigger allowed for a visualisation of Alan's future self by the pool. The model further proved to be a great tool for the digger driver to understand the unusual shape he was aiming for. The swimming zone area is an elongated hexagon, 36 feet long and 24 feet wide, and nine foot deep. See how skillfully the digger driver makes the internal walls with a 60 degree slope by tilting the machine 30 degrees. After three days of digging, it's such a splendid job, it's difficult to see any difference between the model and the full scale pond. The hexagonal swimming zone is 24 foot across, surrounded by a planted regeneration zone 14 feet wide. And the regeneration zone is five foot deep, but its deepest part. The swimming zone is nine foot deep. The submerged hexagonal separating wall will be capped in stone. Layers of shale and shingle create the filtration system under the planted regeneration zone. Covering the earth with pond lining material is not a job to tackle on your own, so Alan asked friends along. As it turns out, he's such a popular guy, he had manpower in abundance. 25 friends helped pull the line into place. A black fleece underliner is laid first over the ground, ready for the water impermeable liner to be laid over. This is a single sheet of RPE 40, reinforced polyethylene around 1mm thick or 40 mils in inches. The plant filter pipework is laid around the ring trench with six airlift pipes vertically extending from this pipework, and the trench is filled with a coarse gravel of expanded shale. The pool edging is made resilient with concrete blocks, so the pool lining edge can be trapped neatly against this with the weight of gravel. The stones at the top of the hexagon have been mortared in position and covered with tarpaulin while it sets. The planted zone is now covered in a decorative river shingle. 
Around the pond, rye grain was sown and left wild all year, providing ample cover for baby toads and frogs that migrated out of the pond. As the gravel is very low in nutrients, the plants will have to compete with algae for the nutrients in the water, so suppressing the growth of algae and maintaining water clarity. The pool is now full of life, being a habitat for a rich diversity of wildlife and simultaneously a tranquil place for people to relax. In Alan's words, the pool has changed our entire place and I look forward to the next spring and summer like never before.